Hey, what's up everyone? I have a video, it's a little bit different from the other ones. This is the first one of this kind that I've ever done, um, but it's in response to a forum thread on the Warp Portal forums that are asking for feedback for what would make the game uh, a little bit better. Uh, so this is for official server IRO Chaos, or uh, not IRO Chaos, just in, IRO in general, I believe. Um, they're asking for uh, feedback for what would make the game a little bit better. Obviously, a lot of people are going to be bringing up issues like uh, getting new content, updates, um, changing uh, this or that, um, different features. Um, my biggest, easiest thing that I feel that Warp Portal are capable of handling on their own would be um, revamping and making over their VIP benefits. So that's what I'm going to focus in on this video. Um, there's a lot of other things that would be nice. Um, I may I have made a lot of suggestions in the suggestions section of the forums, um, but they don't usually get a lot of traction there. So I think that's why they're making a um, a public thread in the main channel for this. So it's getting a lot of feedback, and a lot of the feedback is the same. A lot of the feedback is the same feedback that I'm giving in this video. I just wanted to make one of my thoughts and try this format and see how people liked it. So um, this is my idea for VIP makeover. So to get into the VIP makeover, we kind of need to define what VIP is. Um, so VIP is just a tier above a normal player. Um, premium membership is super common in the MMO and in RPG industry. Um, almost every MMO RPG, not even RPGs, but uh, even shooters um, have a battle pass where you can level up faster, you get more benefits. I know Fortnite has this. I don't even play Fortnite and I know about it. Um, I think PUBG has this. I know uh, H1Z1 has this. Uh, RuneScape has, has this. World of Warcraft has this. Almost every online game has some sort of premium membership that is a tier above the regular service. Um, and the free version of the game is basically an unlimited free trial. And, for Ragnarok, specifically, for IRO, for other games, you don't have an unlimited free trial, and that's something I want to talk about in a bit. But it's very interesting, and I do like that fact about IROs. You have full access to the game, and I mean full access to the game, uh, as a non-VIP customer. Or, not, you're not even a customer at that point, unless you buy OCP. I guess you still are a customer. So... Uh, people that get VIP are generally more invested in the game, they have more attachment to their account, they want account benefits, they want character benefits, they want to have a better quality of life than somebody that doesn't support the game outside of maybe getting OCP items or just by playing. Like, it's really great that you're gung-ho about playing the game, but if you never contribute to the game's uh, longevity, you're not really helping. The only thing that you do is you add plus one to the population, which is nice in and of itself because the more people that are playing the game the more people will be attracted to the game that's kind of how it works so i kind of touched on it before but iro's vip is different from other games um, because a lot of other games will gate their content especially in the mmorpg realm they'll put a gate up that says you have to pay for this game in order to access certain features. World of Warcraft, you can't really get, I think it's level 20 that you can't level past unless you pay for the game. I think, um, I know RuneScape has this where you can access a certain selection of skills, but you can't level all of them unless you pay for the game. Uh, on RuneScape, again, you can only access 80% of the map when uh, you pay for, you, you, you can, only access 20% of the map if you're not a paying customer, and the other 80% is for people that pay for the game. So you kind of lose out on a lot of stuff um, if you don't pay in those games. You can't really get the full experience of the game, which is kind of sad, and I think it's good that IRO doesn't have that. Um, and then for RuneScape, if you stop paying for your benefits, any member's items that you have are useless. Um, you don't get the benefit anymore. So it's really only a benefit so far as you keep paying. It's kind of sad. Um, An IRO doesn't have this because everything is available to everybody at any time. So with the uh, other games like World of Warcraft, you can only get the expansion content if you pay extra money for it. So I don't know if this would help us speed up our expansion cycle, but I don't think that we can charge the same amount for expansions as, uh, say, um, World of Warcraft does. You might be able to charge five bucks for the illusion ice dungeon you might be able to charge five bucks for 
whatever illusion thing comes out. Me personally, I only keep track of what is implemented on IRO. I don't really look at JRO and KRO. I'm very ignorant to how far behind we are, other than the fact that people complain about it a lot on the forums. That's pretty much it. Like, I really don't pay attention to that stuff. And I think it makes my game experience a little bit better because I don't have the defeatist attitude like, oh, we don't have this stuff. I really wish we had this stuff. Like, I'm just happy with what we have, and I'm wondering if we would get more content if we were willing to pay for it. I don't like that idea, but other games do do it that way. So, what are the perks that we get currently? Um, basically, we get a 12 character limit, we get 50% experience, we get two storages instead of one, we get 150% drop rate, which is really just a 50% increase, and... Um, we get access to some VIP NPCs. I don't value the rebirth cost at all. I think it's lying if the battle manual experience modifier changes whether you're VIP or non-VIP. Because when you look at the in-game description, it tells you how much it multiplies your experience by. So I don't know if that line is true, but if it is, they should do away with that completely for non-VIP. The battle manuals should do exactly as they say. Um, I'm not sure if that's just how the author of this arc of the wiki article chose to illustrate the true benefit of it, or if IRO is just lying with the description of what the items do. Um, that should be clarified. I don't value the cost of storages. I don't value the cost of teleports. I don't value the cost of transportation. Those are all very irrelevant costs. A thousand zenny, nobody cares. Zero. I mean, unless you're a brand new player, you have nothing like. There, uh, and even they should have some flexibility, some free transportation, maybe like 50 free transportation things that are character bound that you can sell to an NPC if you don't want to use them anymore. If they're taking up a inventory slot. I don't value the marriage cost. I don't value the magic stone requirement. I think that's a very extraneous requirement. I think it was retroactively added to counteract botting in some way. I think it's stupid, get rid of it. Uh, so ultimately, like I said, I was kind of crossing off the list, but <laughs> since I drew a strike through the lines, I, <laughs> I can't read it now. So uh, I want to just use this to illustrate the point that this is realistically what you're left with. Um, you can see I crossed out the drop rate because a 50% increase in your drops does not increase your baseline chance of getting a card. Uh, most people are just card hunting nowadays because OCP has overtaken the value of every other in-game item except for a couple like um, like temp dex boots. <laughs> like there's nothing that's really replacing that yet. I'm sure it's on the way, but most items are replaced by OCP, so most people are just looking for cards. Um, so a 50% increase does not help in that regard because of the way the rounding works. Um, and a lot of the benefits are still locked behind value-added service and Kaffir shop items, like the Kaffir storage. Uh, there's three storages in existence, um, but you can't access it unless you buy a Kaffir card. And if you're already a paying customer, it seems really stupid to do that. Um, so one of the things that you do get access to are the VIP NPCs. Most of these are useless or have no additional advantage over the ones that are free. Like um, in the Woe Realms, you can still save at the castle that you're going to be fighting in since there's so few people participating in Woe right now. Um, you can save at one castle and you're pretty much going to be where you need to be the whole time. There's no real reason to use the teleports. And the HP SP is really nice. But realistically, if you're weighing the cost of VIP versus the time that you're going to be participating in WoW and needing to fill your HP SP, you might as well use a Yig Berry or something. Because they're like 100k versus if you were to value VIP, it's, I think it's like 10 or $15 a month if you break it down. Um, that's like a bill and a half. So for a bill and a half, you can buy all the Yigberries you, you could ever 
want to use, okay? Like, you don't need VIP to get those benefits. Um, there's a VIP teleporter. There's some other random teleport NPCs that are scattered around. Um, when realistically, all anybody ever does is go to Eden and teleport from the aperture. So those are kind of not really a benefit in my opinion. Uh, Gramps, you do get a nice benefit because you can combine your turn-ins into all base or all job. I think that's a really nice perk for VIP, uh, and I definitely think they should keep that feature. And it is kind of nice that you can take both quests at once. You know, maybe you should be able to take both quests at once normally, but if you're going to restrict it, I think it's kind of fair. Maybe, it's, uh, maybe that's just the way it should be. Um, but I don't know the answer to that question. Uh, so then the thing that I use VIP mostly for is to get the plus seven tall stat buff, which, you know, you don't need it. Um, I've found, like, if you're doing an instance and you die, there's virtually no difference between whether you have the VIP buff and not having it. It's <clears throat> only kind of useful. It's not all that useful. So another thing that they have is this free mercenary. I don't know anybody that's used that uses it. I very rarely see it used when I'm leveling. I think it's just one of those weird features that they added in there because they used to have mercenary scrolls in the lucky boxes. And then I think people weren't very motivated by those or they had a stack of them that they never used or whatever. So they're like, oh, well, people have all these mercenaries that they're never going to use, so we might as well just give them for free, and then the people that want to use them can use them, and then, you know, nobody really cares about them anyway, so we might as well just give it and then market it as a free VIP benefit, when realistically, nobody uses VIP features for that. Uh, it's not really a benefit. And then we have, I like this idea, but I don't like the execution of the uh, overlook of the instances. Uh, the Geffen MVP Summoner has been made obsolete mostly. I mean, in very rare situations, it's still useful, but uh, most people will use Central Lab. And the Overlook Dungeon is kind of an irrelevant dungeon. It's obsolete. Uh, most people that are skilled at leveling will pass that. Um, like when I'm leveling a new character, I'll get from 1 to 99 and like, an hour doing um, sunken ship into harpies. Like it's really uh, not the most optimal place to go and you don't earn that much money from it because the cards really aren't worth very much. So it's not even very good for new players. It's like, it's one of those weird things where it's like, it's too hard for new players. And then once you can do it, it's not worth doing. <laughs> so it's like this weird catch 22. Uh, and then the high orc field map is a joke. It used to be a map that everybody could go to before renewal. And it was West Orc Village, so you go to Orc Village and then you just walk through the portal to the west. And it used to be where Orc Hero would spawn. Does he still spawn there? Is that the only place that he spawns now? No, there's an instance dungeon that has him in it. Yeah, I don't really know what that map is for. I don't really see the benefit of it. Uh, if I was going to level in High Orcs, I would go to Clock Tower. So, uh, it's it's I like the idea. It's like, oh yeah, you have this exclusive map that's for VIP players that you can level on. And I love that idea. That'd be great if there was a VIP map that was just bananas for like low level players, like one to 50. And then there was like another VIP map that was just insane from like 50 to 75. And then another one that was like from 75 to 100. And then another one that was like 100 to 120. And then another one, but I mean, you're kind of getting into the realm of like Gramps, but I'm talking like a VIP version of that map, of like a map that is exclusive, it's less crowded, it has good mob density, the mobs have high experience values. Um, you know, different things like that. I really like that idea. Uh, the execution so far sucks. Um, the one good thing from the VIP services that they did do was they gave you the, t the 10 free token of Siegfried, but that's only because people were abusing the fact that you could turn in Eden merit badges for an unlimited quantity. So you actually could, on a daily basis, you're getting less uh, tokens of Siegfried than you could, but for the average player, if you do all of these instances that are available to you, 10 tokens of Siegfried is more than enough. Like, who dies in Renewal? Oops. Um, so these are the kind of things that I think VIP should do. They should give you quality of life benefits beyond what paying customers can get. 
they should give you early access to new content. I didn't talk about that before, but this is something that I will address going forward. Uh, and it should give you um, some account management features on their portal and some access to exclusive membership areas. I also think it would be nice if they would reward players for concurrent membership. Uh, so three month, six month, 12 month, uh, year and a half, two year, or, you know, maybe uh, an annual reward for each milestone year, or maybe reward people every three months kind of thing um, with like an account bound costume that you could wear that uh, um, or something like that. And then obviously priority ticket handling. If you pay, you should get better service. I think that's already the case, but I don't think that's advertised and they might as well advertise it because I think it's pretty important. Uh, so yeah, I want to expand on the issues. So quality of life, what I'm talking about there is you should double the experience rate and you should double the drop rate baseline. Um, there should be maybe VIP events where you get even more than that. So if you're VIP, you get an increased rate. If you're not VIP, eh, whatever, you know, maybe you should get VIP, sucks for you. Um, you should get access to fast teleporting. You should be able to vend when you're offline. I don't like that I have to leave my computer on. Um, because I'm more likely to DC, uh, and then I have to set my shop up all over again. I think that's really annoying. Uh, I think they, they should be able to handle that server side. It should not be my, my fault. Uh, they should increase the storage and character limit. Um, they should give access to that third storage without requiring a CAFRA card, and we should be able to make at least one of each character if we want to. That's what I think. I don't think you need a full account of 27 characters. I think that's overkill, but I think you should be able to at least make one of every character if you wanted it. Uh, and then if you want to make a different build, you can VIP another account and you can make that another project for another time. Um, because there's very unlikely that you're going to level both accounts concurrently. So... Um, I also think that you should get access to new content. I don't know if it should be completely exclusive to VIP. I think non-VIP should be able to purchase access. Like for the Overlook dungeon, I think non-VIP customers could purchase a key or a magic stone to access it. I like the idea. I think there was some backlash earlier on, but if it's backlash from non-paying customers, go screw yourself. Um, if you, As long as they're going to get the content eventually, I should say. You can't just... Mm. Well, because I'm also advocating for the fact that you have exclusive leveling maps, so that could be considered exclusive, but I would just mark it that as it's a VIP perk. It's always going to be a VIP perk. It's not an expansion of content. It's just an alternative leveling area. But for like expansions like, say, 16.1, um, like Royal Banquet, I think VIP members should get a jump start on that stuff. They should be able to maybe do Royal Banquet like a week or a month in advance of non-paying customers. And then after a month, then non-paying customers can access it. That's just my opinion. Uh, and I think that there should be better account management. So like I should be able to reorder my account characters through my online portal. I should be able to maybe uh, change the gender through the online portal. They have really weird back-end problems with changing gender on accounts so i understand if that's not doable it's really shoddy db work in my opinion but uh that it is what it is and you should be able to see things like your character how much zenny they have on it um where they're located stuff like that there should just be a, an account management portal i feel that you have access to and then um yeah stuff like renaming and reordering accounts are important uh, and then continued from this, uh, for the exclusive membership areas, there should be like a VIP a lounge that has all of the essential uh, um, NPCs. And I did make a forum post about what, the, what I feel those NPCs would be, a tool dealer, a saver, a storage person, a VIP buffer, uh, stuff like that. And... Uh, we should have private leveling instances, maybe, where we can reserve an instance for two hours and, or for like an hour, uh, and it will generate monsters respawning. It can be like a little mini quest. I don't know, something for VIP members that would make leveling better than a non-VIP customer. Maybe a VIP exclusive town where we can just go and hang out with other players that support the game. Generally, I've found that people that pay for VIP are a lot more reasonable and a lot less um, triggered than other people. 
uh, and I like hanging around those people more than than non-paying customers. Uh, non-paying customer entitlement is very, I, I kind of look down on that. I don't like it. Uh, and then for, um, this is a possible solution for the OCP problem, um, where the OCP power creep just destroys all the MVPs. I think that it would be nice if VIP customers could have access to an instance or something once a month that would change based on what OCP item is most powerfully uh, released recently. So like for Fafnir armor, it would be nice if there was like some Earth element MVP that was uh, weak to like ranged attacks or like really strong against physical damage where Dragon's Breath would bypass that and you would have like an incentive to like really feel the power of your OCP item. I think that'd be really interesting. Uh, there should be a, an exclusive forum location for paid customers to give feedback. And I think that should be considered more valuable than non-paid customer feedback. And I think that there should be exclusive polls for paying customers, uh, maybe an NPC in game that would ask you for what you want to see next in the game that we could vote on in game using a VIP account being the prerequisite. Uh, and then, like I said before, um, for costumes and, and rewards, you should be rewarded for being a loyal customer. So the longer you keep VIP on an account, the more you should get benefits. Uh, maybe up to a year, and then at a year you have this costume that gives you like 40% increased experience, 20% increased drop rate, 10% HP, SP, and like plus 5 to all stats or something. Like, it seems like a lot, but in the grand scheme of things, it's not that bad. And then, uh, it should only grant benefits outside of PvP so you don't have an advantage in player versus player. Uh, and then I already talked about priority ticket handling. So those are just kind of my thoughts on that. Um, I don't know. I'd be curious to think what other people think should be included in VIP, what you'd like to see out of VIP, uh, if you have a differing opinion on whether VIP customers should have special preferential treatment uh, or what the value, if that's the case, what the value of a non-paying customer is if they truly do not spend any money. Aside, uh, there's the roundabout way where they can purchase items from people it creates a market for people that are paid or that will pay for ocp items to sell them to people that don't i'm not sure uh, what the answer is there i'd be curious to think what other people are, are thinking um, but that's kind of my thoughts on the issue um i thought this would be a little bit shorter of a video but it turns out i have quite a bit to say on it so um yeah let me know what you guys think um and what other items in the game you would like to see improved.